Hello and welcome to the HBM Frequently Asked Questions video series. My name is Jason Osborne. I'm an application engineer out of Detroit, Michigan. Today we're going to talk about the TIM-40 setup working with the T-40B torque transducer. Today we're going to go over wiring of the, the T-40B and the TIM series and I'm also going to go through um, some of the key functions uh, in the assistant on the t 40 and TIM. So today I have a T40B setup that's a thousand newton meters, uh, TIM 40 module, and, and I'm connecting everything uh, with a 174-6 uh, TMC open leads uh, HBM cable. Let's go through the wiring. T40B um, on our frequency uh, it comes out of port 1, and there's also supply voltage for the, the transducer itself. Port 2 uh, is going to be your speed, uh, either your speed or your speed with reference pulse. Port 3 is your voltage output and your supply voltage to the transducer. Port 4 is your TMC port, um, test module control, uh, and that's the one we're going to be talking about today. On the TIM-40, I want to go over some of the wiring and outputs uh, for this. Uh, your X1 port is your input port for your TIM module and your torque uh, transducer itself. This is going to be pass-through power that's going to go through uh, X3. So in this case, you don't need to power both the transducer and the TIM module. Um, if you're using that TMT channel, um, your power is going to go right through that. Um, your X2 port, um, that's a shunt power supply. We always suggest that that's a separate power supply than your actual transducer. This is going to give you the cleanest values for all of your um, shunting. Yeah, your X3 port is your digital port that goes from your transducer. On the other side of the TIM module, you've got the X4 port, which is the analog output. X5 is your frequency output. X6 is your Ethernet. This is used for setup only. It's not recommended for measurement uh, opportunities. Um, with this one here, it, you can use your setup uh, for all of your uh, TIM assistant that I'm going to be covering um, shortly. I uh, do want to mention the TIM module is a hard uh, IP addressed module. So uh, in the example, we're using 192.168.1-2. And our computer is set up uh, in the same network, 1-1. Uh, um, the X7 port uh, on your TIM module is your Anybus. So with Anybus, you have a couple different uh, options. You have a CAN module or you have a Profibus. And these slide into the, the TIM module and gives you output um, from there. Here's another example of the wiring um, and all the details. This is found right in our manual. You can go right through that um, on the TIM-40 manual, but wanted to uh, show it to you here. Again, X1, uh, 18 to 30 volt supply. Uh, X2 is your um, shunt value, 5 to 24 volts. Uh, the color coding for your um, cable, your digital cable. So let's dive into the um, TIM a little bit. Um, when you first plug in the, the TIM module and you have your IP address set, uh, this is going to be the first thing that comes up. In the Systems tab, Interface Module, it's going to show you what firmware and, ver and version you are. This kind of shows that you're connected uh, to that module itself. I'm going to skip around on this a little bit, so um, if you follow the arrows on the left side of the screen there, um, it'll show you kind of what I'm talking about and where I'm at, and we'll go into more detail. Next one I want to skip down to is passcode entry. Your default passcode is 0123 for the uh, TIM module. So once you put this in, uh, you're going to hit accept, and then you're going to get uh, more access um, to the, the items on the left side in the systems tab and the parameterized inter. So back in the system tab, um, in the general settings, this is where you can name your project, select your language. If you want to select a separate password um, for your module, you can do that here. 
Um, like I mentioned, the default password is 0123, but this can be changed um, for your module for your liking. Next one down is the interface, uh, Ethernet interface tab. This is where you can go through and change the IP address for your module if you wanted to put it on a different network other than um, the standard IP address that, that comes in. So any changes that you make here, uh, you can to accept. And then also save to transducer, which we'll talk, talk about in a second. Um, but any changes uh, that you make, you have to save to the transducer itself. The next one uh, in the systems tab is your field bus interface. This is where you can go through and select the different baud rates, um, select uh, different buses if you're running Profibus or uh, CAN bus. So it, this is your, your Anybus setup tool and how you can do, do that with your, your different modules. Next one I'm going to skip down to um, is your parameterized in, uh, interface module. So what this is, is in this section, um, you can go through and put in how many decimal points you want for each, um, all of your measurements, um, what units you want for your torque, uh, your sign um, in this one I wanted to touch base with. In the bottom of your screen there, I've got a T12 set up. If you look at the HBM rotor with the HBM sticker on top, clockwise is positive and counterclockwise is uh, going to be your negative direction. So that's a positive and negative. In here you can also add different filters to low pass 1 and low pass 2. Uh, I go into detail on low pass 1 and low pass 2, what those actually are, in another uh, frequently asked video series called dual range torque transducers. But we'll go into to that in more detail. So you can also change the filtering options there. Um, the next tab down is your frequency output. Um, this is where you can type in your, your range of your actual torque transducer and your uh, measurement points. This is a very key item. With the TIM module, it is not a smart module. So what I mean by that is if you plug in a 1,000 newton meter torque transducer, it's not going to auto-populate to 1,000 newton meters. If you don't have these values correct, um, when you go to your measurement signal, you're going to get a system error. And I'll show you that um, later on, but this is very key to actually type in the first point and second point. And this can go right off of your uh, torque range of your torque transducer, and also it can go off of your cal sheet. Um, so make sure you put this in here. Same thing for your analog. If you're running an analog option, um, your torque values is your, your main value of your torque transducer. And your first and second point are your um, voltage or current options. The next one you can go um, through uh, that I wanted to touch base on. Under parameterized sensor, um, you can set the password or enter password for that. Again, that's 0123 for your T40Bs. Um, and you can actually go in and change the center frequency of your uh, transducer itself. I've got another video that mentions uh, how to do this uh, on our website. It's changing the center frequency is the, the name of the video. But the, here's how you go in and change that. You can change it from 60 plus or minus 30 um, to 10 plus or minus 5 or 240 uh, plus or minus 120. Save changes. The signal conditioning. This is a very big one. Um, this is where you're going to do the internal shunt um, you controlled right by your TIM40 assistant. Um, so with the shunt value, uh, when you first see this, you're going to uh, click the drop down uh, to turn the shunt on and then hit accept. The next thing you're going to do is go down to the measure and visualize uh, tab in the very bottom. Um, and this is going to show you your, um, your torque values right at zero. Obviously, should, these should be right around zero. If you're seeing a big torque value, um, look at the setup. Uh, there might be something, a uh, bending moment or another load that's, that's actually on the transducer itself. Um, if you have questions with this, give us a call at support line and we can go through this uh, a little bit more in detail. But the key thing, like I mentioned, the status, um, in this example, it says okay. 
if this is not okay, you're going to get a measurement error here. That goes back to the, um, the torque range that you have for your frequency and your analog output. So keep that in mind as you, as you go through. But this is a, a, a live screen. Um, this is not time stamped by any means. Um, so what I mean by that is this is just um, a, a digital reading of your actual torque transducer. This is not a measurement mode. We've had some people try to use this as measurement. Um, so it's not the setup, not the same setup as your normal torque transducer. Um, so like I said, this is not time stamped. Setup only. The next one I want to talk about is the save load parameters, which is right above the measure um, tab. There's a couple different uh, parameter sets you could do. There's up to four um, and, and the default. So you can save this to a PC. So if you want to have the same settings on multiple uh, transducers, you can save it right to this PC and save it as a backup. And then you can load in and save right from there. So anytime you save um, anything, you make a change, you're gonna save to the transducer, and then you have to do a power cycle. The power cycle is key. Um, because basically what that does is that chain, that saves it to the uh, EEPROM of the actual unit. So when it starts up, you're going to save all those parameters. If you make changes and don't do a power cycle right away, and let's say you lose power you know, a week or so down the, the, the line, you're going to lose those changes. So make sure you save to the transducer and then do a power cycle. So if you have any other questions uh, regarding the T40 or the TIM40 setups, please give me a call at 1-800-578-4260 or support at usa.hbm.com. Look forward to seeing you at other uh, videos and other trainings. Thanks. Have a good one.